Hello. If you, it's already two o'clock. So if you could please take your seats. We have a an interesting session on uh, working group two, which is um, dealing with SHM strategies and the connection with structural performance. Uh, we have six presentations this afternoon, and then we have a few more tomorrow morning. Uh, to make it a little bit more lively, what we will do uh, is we will have the first three presentations, and we will have a discussion on these, and then we will short break just to stretch our legs, and uh, we are ready for the next three presentations and a discussion. Uh, so without taking more time from the speakers. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sikora to present his uh, fact sheet on assessment of cooling towers and industrial chimneys based on monitoring. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Marios. Well, in this contribution, we would like uh, just, uh, well, can you hear me? I think so. Uh, in this contribution, we would like just to uh, just to show show you uh, what uh, kind of data uh, we have uh, available, and uh, maybe also we would like to uh, to indicate some challenges uh, which could be uh, which could be uh, points of uh, further activities maybe under the umbrella of this uh, cost action. The contribution is uh, co-authored by my colleague uh, Jana Markova and also. Uh, by uh, Milan Holitsky. Well, the motivation for, uh, for collecting of such data and uh, analyzing them is uh, that, uh, well, uh, cooling towers and industrial chimneys in uh, our country are uh, now reaching their service life. Many of them has been built in uh, 1960s, 70s, 80s, and uh, the concerns of uh, power producers are uh, whether they can use and uh, under which condition they can use uh, such structures uh, for further uh, uh, for further activities uh, well of course maintenance plans should be based on uh, estimates of uh, remaining uh, lifetime so this is the ultimate question uh, well the producers installed uh, monitoring systems or are using monitoring systems that uh, provide a great amount of information about performance of uh, key energetic devices, meaning not only cooling towers and chimneys, but also uh, turbine generators and uh, other, uh, other key devices in uh, power units and power plants. Uh, well, so this contribution is focused uh, or tried, uh, attempts to provide an overview of uh, uh, operational, so let's say basic statistical tools for data analysis, procedures uh, of um, residual lifetime estimation, and trying to provide uh, um, overview challenges for optimizing uh, monitoring systems. So, just to give you a feeling uh, of, uh, of the current practice, uh, uh, let me summarize uh, parameters uh, which are now observed for concrete masonry and uh, steel structures. Uh, so, uh, talking about uh, concrete, uh, uh, typically cracking is uh, visually inspected and um, uh, records are made, spalling of concrete, Carbonation depths are measured and uh, um, statistical data on concrete covers are also available. Uh, for masonry structures, uh, well, deterioration of surface uh, on, and deterioration of units and uh, mortar is also recorded. Uh, for steel structures uh, and uh, steel reinforcement in concrete, um, data on steel corrosion are available and for geotechnical aspects, uh, irreversible deformations and settlements of foundations are uh, recorded. Well, uh, structures uh, 
Well, large structures like uh, cooling towers and uh, industrial chimneys are typically divided into zones for which uh, homogeneous uh, deterioration conditions can be assumed. So typical division is, uh, let's say, outside and inside surfaces of shell, columns, supports of cooling systems, uh, cooling system and uh, inspection galleries for cooling tower, similar division for uh, chimneys. And uh, our, say, preliminary observation is that uh, current, current monitoring uh, seems to be sufficient uh, for detecting uh, serious damage, so no, uh, no severe uh, failures or even collapses uh, were not observed. But maybe such system or the present system uh, provides uh, redundant information and uh, in this respect it uh, should be optimized. Uh, just to give an uh, illustration of uh, data we have, uh, <coughs> so uh, while well, uh, we have uh, digitalized uh, databases of monitoring data for the period of uh, roughly speaking last 10 years and uh, well very typically uh, the period of two years uh, between subsequent measurements is uh, uh, applicable. Uh, what is, uh, uh, what is uh, advantage of these data is that uh, reference areas were introduced, so this means that uh, for spatial structures like shell of a cooling tower, uh, they are uh, given areas for which uh, carbonation depths uh, is, uh, for instance carbonation depths, is uh, periodically uh, monitored. Uh, and uh, in the graph, uh, just to um, just to see uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the data we have uh, on horizontal axis, we have uh, time since construction. So this is the age of uh, chimney at the time of uh, measurement in this graph. And on a vertical axis, we have uh, carbonation depths in uh, millimeters. And uh, and uh, you may see that uh, by colors are distinguished uh, three chimneys, which are uh, which are in uh, one power plant, so uh, of different age. So uh, green triangles are for chimneys denoted by number three, and uh, blue num chimney number two, and uh, red circles are chimney number one. Uh, well, just uh, for illustrative purposes, uh, you can see uh, here uh, the outcome of uh, FIB uh, FIB uh, model for uh, carbonation depths taken from one of the bulletins of FIB. Uh, just I would like to emphasize that this is based on prior information without any updating for now. And uh, you see a uh, mean trend of uh, carbonation depth and, uh, and uh, dashed curves indicates, indicates a plus minus one sigma. Uh, from the mean. Uh, well, immediately from this graph, we can see that there are uh, there are many questions uh, which are open and uh, needs uh, further analysis. So uh, we have subsequent years, uh, which uh, in which uh, we observe uh, in which observe we uh, decreasing trend of uh, carbonation depth. So uh, the explanation should be whether it's. Uh, it should be attributed to measurement uncertainty or maybe it's just a random uh, outcome of a selection of um, uh, measurement uh, areas. And uh, <clears throat> we also observe in the data some systematic uh, errors uh, uh, which uh, should be explained and uh, maybe uh, such data should be removed from further analysis. Of course, the question is, if we have a chimney of uh, age of uh, 40 years, uh, do, we need, uh, do we need to measure carbonation depths in two years uh, or not? Uh, just another comparison from the data uh, on horizontal axis. Now we have a, a height above uh, ground level, so the chimneys are about, uh, uh, above uh, 200 meters, and uh, mean carbonation depths uh, is on vertical axis, and we see comparison between east and west uh, surfaces uh, for which, uh, because of uh, wind-driven uh, carbonation, uh, 
the carbonation depth should be different according to theoretical model. So we see observation and we see some indication of uh, differences from the data. Uh, well, of course, for practical, uh, practical purposes, uh, the statistical treatment of uh, data should be, uh, should be relatively simple. So uh, the typical procedure uh, which we are trying to introduce uh, for the operator is, uh, should, uh, should include the following steps. Test of outliers, so if we have some observation which uh, uh, cause of which uh, is uh, non-statistical, so it, it has some technical reasons, we should uh, eliminate these data from the, from the analysis. Correlation analysis, which might indicate that uh, some parameters uh, uh, some parameters are <clears throat> so correlated that it's sufficient to observe only one parameter, representative parameter. Regression modeling, uh, <clears throat> uh, so fitting of, uh, fitting of uh, appropriate uh, regression models uh, on the basis of experience. So for instance, from FIB model, uh, from FIB model we, uh, we have uh, uh, we have indications of trends in carbonation depths. So let's say it's, uh, uh, it's some nonlinear model and uh, similar models are then fitted to empirical data. Confidence interval, so once we have a fitted uh, uh, um, regression model, we can uh, identify uh, confidence intervals of the curve. Uh, well, this slide is uh, just to attract uh, your attention also to, uh, to assessment of or evaluation of the data because uh, we are dealing with, uh, with uh, structures with uh, large surfaces and that's why also uh, <coughs> criteria for maybe classifying or for decision making about uh, structures need to take into account uh, spatial variability of uh, phenomena. So this table is just uh, indicating how uh, the relationship between uh, carbonation depth and concrete cover is assessed for, uh, for spatial structure. So we need uh, some threshold value for let's say the difference uh, between carbonation depths and concrete cover, but we also need uh, to identify extent of area for which uh, this value is acceptable. And uh, now I would like to summarize some challenges uh, which uh, may be treated uh, within this action. So one, one challenge is, uh, let's say, purely technical. So is selection of uh, observed uh, deterioration processes and appropriate uh, and uh, relevant threshold values, is this selection appropriate or correct? Uh, how, well, if you know that there are some correlations between cracking, carbonation and corrosion progress, do we need to observe all these, uh, all these uh, processes and uh, uh, can we optimize uh, threshold values in sense that uh, this would lead to optimal maintenance plans? Appropriate method for monitoring is uh, another is another uh, point of concern. So we need to balance between related costs and uncertainty in outcomes of the procedure. Well. <clears throat> If you look at one specific time and uh, we have a large surface, so uh, natural question is what should be the amount of observation at one time for components of, let's say, different areas? So how to make distinction between shell of a cooling tower and columns supporting, uh, supporting the shell? Well, another question could be uh, what should be optimal time interval between measurements for different degradation processes, so for carbonation ingress or for corrosion development, do we need the same interval and what is the optimum interval? And the, well, the fi uh, maybe the last question in this open question in this presentation, uh, how can we use uh, 
how can we uh, utilize uh, monitoring of similar structures? So we have uh, three, well, very similar chimneys in one power plant. Do we need to observe all the three chimneys or it's sufficient to, uh, to observe only one and maybe check our uh, predictions uh, less frequently for the other? Well, tools uh, which, uh, which uh, we think uh, should be applied for, to answer these questions are uh, some kind of uh, uh, modeling uh, of uh, spatial uh, variability in uh, deterioration processes. Uh, uh, we have experienced and applied uh, these approaches in uh, previous publications for a simplified model uh, of uh, FIB uh, given in FIB bulletin 59, uh, which is based on um, uh, on uh, well simple modeling of a zone. So for a zone, we assume that uh, uh, um, uh, we can assume uh, homogeneous uh, deterioration conditions, and then this zone is uh, divided into elements and. Uh, <coughs> For each element, we assumed that uh, uh, that uh, realization of considered random field, so for instance, carbonation depth, is independent from the other element. And we may define some hyperparameters, which are uh, which has uh, common values for all the elements in the zone, which are typical weathering uh, conditions. Uh, well, another tool is uh, in this action, this is called uh, ultimately value of information. Uh, well, in this graph, uh, this is just a very simple idea uh, of uh, balancing of costs of monitoring and benefits associated to uh, obtained information. So if we have on the horizontal axis, if we have some decision parameter describing intensity of monitoring and uh, we have... Uh, more or less uh, linear costs of monitoring and uh, let's say some failure consequences which can be given in terms of uh, repair or even failure consequences. So then we optimize these costs and find some optimum intensity of monitoring. And uh, well, for these studies, uh, what is relatively uh, good information is that we have uh, information on monitoring and repair costs uh, and we also can uh, describe failure consequences which are inevitable part of this, uh, this game and this optimization. So, well, with that I would like to thank you for your attention. Okay.